Pasta. I'm a dope addict. I heard that before. Why don't you give me something new? I'm a sex crazed dope fiend. <laughs> so by far my most um, requested content has been more stuff about gay Mike, more uh, gay prison stories. So I really like racked my brain and tried to remember like all the stuff that happened with gay Mike. So the one thing I didn't get into was the end of his relationship. So I told you he had uh, met that young, that dude and you know, the dude had never uh, been with a guy before. I think like he told me that, uh, you know, I guess the kid had had crushes, but never acted on it. And, uh, you know, he still didn't really talk about it. Like he was clearly like cool about it. He was like openly dating a dude and took a lot of social shit, which is like kind of something, you know, I never thought about it. Like now that I can kind of empathize with it, I, I, I mean, I thought it was a pretty brave thing to do then, you know, to stand up like that. But I, I, yeah. Interesting. But, um, afterwards he ended up getting into it with somebody. I can't remember the details. He used to, you know, he'd like stab people for money, but I don't think it was that, but, uh, I don't even know if they actually physically got into it or if it was just getting to that point, but he got rode out to another prison, which is pretty common. Um, they split up relationships, I think, on purpose a lot, too, just because they end bad often. So they had like a way of communicating where they both had his um, gay Mike's mom's phone number. So they would call her phone at the same time and she would patch it through as a three-way call, which um, they do monitor for and you will get in trouble for. But uh, from what I understood, they never got caught. And they would also do the same thing with like bouncing letters because you can't send prison to prison mail. But, you know, you can just send it to somebody on the outside and they can bounce it back. So, yeah, that was kind of sad to see. And, uh, you know, I really <laughs> I doubt they like got together on the outside. I mean. One was from, Gay Mike was from, like, Down River, which is, like, damn near Ohio, and the other dude was from the UP. You know, most of that stuff doesn't, uh, you know, last. But uh, the other thing that was funny about uh, Mike, man, this is just a little one. Man, you know, we used to we used to smoke weed all the time in there, you know, and Mike, Mike was a, a, a nice guy, and I had a lot of money in there, and a lot of people, you know, they get predatory with that, and Mike was never like that. So I used to smoke with him a lot, and, uh, you know, you can get away with it pretty easy. I mean, I must have done it. 100 200 times never got caught but you know you, you're real low-key about it man like you you get this little joint and you're like i would like hold it you know curled up in my hand and as i was walking i would you know pretend to scratch my nose hold it and like just keep and like slowly breathe out and you continue walking and then i'd, I'd pass it you know kind of try to finagle it over to mike and i'd you know look away blow out a little bit more and i look back and mike's just he's just smoking it like it is like it ain't against the rules, man. He just didn't have a fear of it. It was funny. Uh, the 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 other thing, man, and is uh, he he would uh, you know, he'd, he'd get made fun of or uh, you know, harassed quite a bit because he wasn't um, he wasn't like part of the uh, whole sissy crew, and he would point out guys to me, man, that uh, I'm trying to think of how to say this for YouTube would like flash him you know what i mean he's like he's like weird stuff too like in the bathroom just you know start whipping sawing around at him and w without fail and I've, don't get me wrong basically everybody in prison is homophobic but without goddamn fail those were always like the vocal i guess you would say yeah they were very vocal about it because there is a certain thing where like yeah everybody's homophobic in there but you're also around it all day, every, you know, you've seen it, you see it for the 700th time, you know, you don't really need to comment on it. So, but there are guys that still do. And it's like, bro, you've been around, you've been in prison 20 years. This stuff still pisses you off. And that's usually, uh, yeah. And that that's usually means something. So I'm not one of these guys that think like everybody is projecting. I think there is a very specific way it's done specifically with like what I said, really vocal. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I have for Game Mike. The second one thing I wanted to get into was how I actually came to get put on this ankle monitor. So I don't know how many people know on YouTube know that I'm on ankle monitor. The people that know me from my other work, uh, you know, it's pretty well known. So I'm going to have to get into the history of that. Okay, I just I just remembered a good one about Mike. Uh, so the whole time he was in there, he had a house um, when he was on the outside and I think he had been like dating or living with, uh, you know, a couple dudes. He had a young dude 
And, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, you can live in my house while I'm in jail. And I don't think he expected uh, to go to prison. So he ends up going to prison and then, you know, he finds out the, the his ex-boyfriend moved somebody new in. And now they're just basically staying at his house. So now he's like, what the fuck, you know, and he can't get a hold of them. And, you know, from there, you can't really do anything. You know, he has to try to, you know, have his mom help him. But, you know, he's the one with the house. It's just a big clusterfuck. And, you know, Mike was in there for speed and the dudes were uh, making speed in his house so the whole time he was worried he's like oh my god they're gonna the house is gonna get raided it's gonna get destroyed it's probably destroyed anyways just from them living in there and the shit they're getting up to and it was just like it was just uh an ongoing battle in his life and uh you know i've heard jail described once as walking in circles talking about shit you can't fix and this was just the ultimate example just being totally helpless while these people fuck with your house and then finally uh <laughs> one day mike comes out to the yard and he's got he's waving around a copy of like the wine dot local newspaper <laughs> and it says like you know house burns down in you know blank lab explosion <laughs> and he's like they did it i knew it i knew it was gonna happen yeah, and he, so he, he couldn't evict him in time, man, and they they burned down his fucking house. Yeah, that was a bummer for him. Okay, the video should, here should be much better quality. So I'm going to talk about how I actually got on this ankle monitor. Can you see it? There you go. Um, you know, so I just completed a program called Drug Court. Um, some of you might have heard of that. It's like a very intensive probation. My county's was not as intensive as most other counties, but at the same time, the bar to get in the program was so much lower. Um, you know, where I live right now in Saginaw, you really got to do something kind of big to get on drug court. Um, I got on for a simple possession. I was uh, within five feet of a little pebble in 2019, so you know, four years ago now, um, and I got put on that program. So it was, I think it was like 15 months of pretty intensive, like a lot of classes, a lot of reporting in. And I was due to get off um, basically the very end of March of this year. And on Christmas Day, I had woken up and found my grandma dead. And I always thought that was like the big thing that was going to make me relapse. And I didn't. But the same at the same time, I never really processed it. Um, I ended up getting back together with my girlfriend a couple days later and then just immediately, you know, put everything into that. So when that inevitably um, ended up crashing down on Valentine's, I just like spiraled. I remember uh, immediately I went and got some gabapentin, which weren't tested for. So I took those and I ended up that same night meeting another girl on the, you know, the best dating app for straight men, Grinder. And I linked up with her. So we ended up kind of like, you know, becoming codependent. But I, I had gotten this idea in my head, like, fuck it, I'm, I'm using. Um, you know, starting around like, man, when I got out of prison uh, in like 2015, I had like 2014, I had like a good year or two. But then starting in like the end of 2016, I stopped hanging out with people. I just would use, um, get clean for a little bit, use again. And I was just in this permanent state of limbo. I can't tell you, um, I would go like days without speaking out loud because I, I would text my dealer. He would, I wouldn't even meet him in person. I'd just put the money in the mailbox. Um, I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't hang out with anybody. So I, then I had, uh, you know, like one day, all of a sudden that all that loneliness ended and that was, uh, the day I met my ex. So it, it, the loneliness had been brutal, especially just how long it had gone on. But it's the loneliness is kind of like jail, man. Like going to jail is worse than being in jail. You kind of get used to it. And, you know, having that loneliness cured, feeling fulfilled, and then having to go to back to the extreme level of loneliness. It was like such a sharp drop. I, I just like, it, I couldn't do it. You know, that's why I immediately you know, got codependent with another person. And that's obviously that didn't, you know, fix anything. It did, it was like temporary, but I still had it in my mind I was going to use. So I started, you know, getting Bitcoin, going on the dark web and slowly acquiring more and more stuff. I don't know. I'm not going to get into specifics because this is YouTube, but literally like everything, um, I, I do do it all. Um, 
you know, and I, I think I spent somewhere between fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars total, uh, just acquiring stuff. And this was over the course of about a month. And it, it you know, I just told somebody about this the other day. I never told me about this. It was so sick, like a, a an addict like me to hold on to that much stuff is almost impossible. It was just because I was getting tested all the time. I couldn't do it, but it drove me crazy, man. As soon as that first package came, time started moving so slow. Like every second clicked by cause I was just waiting for like three or four weeks before I could use it. I, I literally um, lost a significant amount of product like handling it. Because like I, I got it and I hit it, but then I wanted to look at it. So I like literally every day I'd go and I'd find this stuff and I'd, I it was like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, just like looking at it and moving it around and putting it in different containers, smelling it. Um, you know it's sick. And then, then I got to, I think like Friday, I was was going to be the last day I would have to drop, and it was Wednesday, and I didn't drop Wednesday, and I figured you know if I don't drop Thursday. Well, I get off on Friday, so I can go and get off before I drop. You know, I thought I could get away with it. And it ended up working out fine like that. Um, I ended up, I never dropped dirty while on drug court. But I had to go to probation that following Monday. And the idea in my head was like, okay, I'll use like for a day, and then I'll have four days to clean out for probation. Then I'll use the rest of it. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, I remember, you know, when I made the decision to use early, usually when that happens, um, like I snap, like I stop, I don't think of any consequences at all. Like I'm, I put on the blinds and I just go this time. I was still, I knew what I was throwing away. It was like multiple years. Um, so I was like, even though I knew I, I had committed, I was going to do it. I, I could not bring myself. Like I put the, pu- uh, the pipe to my mouth and I just could not, I didn't want to, I knew what I was doing, um, what I was throwing away, like how bad it was going to be. And I had to work myself up into it. Um, at this point in time, like I could like make myself break down crying by like looking at certain pictures of my ex. So I just started, you know, looking at those pictures and like thinking about it and just you know getting you know sad. Um, and eventually, I took that first hit, and it it felt I felt it a little bit, and I immediately knew I was screwed. Like it doesn't matter now; I'm dirty. And I committed, and I knew not just beyond that, I knew I wasn't going to stop. And, but I wasn't that intoxicated, so all I, I was just felt all this fear. So now I, I have to like relieve this fear. I was like, well, I'm screwed anyways. I have to do enough of this so that I, I'm not scared anymore. And that if that was Wednesday, you know, that was basically a blur, but it didn't get super bad. I think like I ended up, you know, starting the injections the next day. Um, I tried to go to school. I ended up passing out in a bathroom. You know how some bathrooms, man, it's like that metal, that, you know, sharp metal thing that your back would rest on. Well, you know, a lot of, I had nodded out for a couple hours, leaned back. And, um, you know, it's a common thing when people um, nod out, not super common, but, you know, fall asleep funny. They can lose their limbs just because you don't feel anything. And I woke up hours later, it's night. Um, and my back was just in the worst pain. And it was one of those injuries where like, it gets worse over the next three days. Like once I was like three or four days in, like I was hobbling, like I could barely walk. Driving was like, I would cry. I was so, I, any other time, if I wasn't like actively using, I would have for sure went to the hospital, but I was just too scared to. Um, and I remember at this time, the, the trans girl I had gotten, you know, codependent with, um, she, she was kind of, this is fucked up. Um, she was really getting into me and she was nice enough to invite me to like her mom's birthday and like some quinceanera type shit. And both times I, uh, got too, you know, I got too high and I couldn't go do it. And she like never forgave me for that. And that was a shitty, that was a really bad thing. Um, I remember though, like (laughs) she was heated. Like I couldn't believe she even, like, I think it was like the morning after the second time I screwed up. Like I I called her, like, I'm sorry. And I went over there and I thought, I didn't know if she was going to attack me or what. But when I walked, and she was pissed, but when she walked in, when she, like, when I walked in and she saw me and, like, how bad I was, because, like, you know, I'm a pretty fit, clean-cut dude, she kind of dropped the meanness and, like, just felt bad for me. I had, like, scabs all over. The under of my nose was raw. Just, you know, your skin looks all bad, but it was just, like, physically, oh, yeah, and I'm, I can barely walk. I'm limping. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just looked awful, man. And... 
I think that was like Sunday night. Um, I was supposed to go into report Monday. Um, I had kind of foreseen this though. And I had told my PO, Hey, I might, uh, go up North. Um, she's like, well, just come in Wednesday if you do. So, uh, I think I ended up like, I didn't go in and she texted me and I was like, Oh, I'm going to the ER for my back. Um, anyways, I went, I went in Wednesday and I was like, all right, I know what's up. So I went in and I told her I was dirty. Um, you know, we do the test and it was like five or six dirties and man, you know, I've since had a lot of problems with my PO over the transphobia, but I will say she, uh, has went above and beyond for me, man. Like I, uh, you know, I have like a very, uh, platonic love for her still. It's hard for me. Um, even, even with all the transphobia, it's hard for me to totally write her off. Cause you know, I've never been one of these guys that's like, Oh, the PO is, uh, out to get me. But I've never really had, I've never had POs that gave a shit, um, except her, you know, she really went out of her way. She, she would also, um, you know, show up at my house randomly, which I never had him do before, but you know, that was more, uh, she didn't punish me as bad. So I think like, you know, it wasn't her trying to get me. It was her like actually, um, wanting me to get clean. Uh, but man, dude, when I got those dirties, man, I, I God damn, I swear to God, I thought she wanted to give me the death penalty. <laughs> Like she was like, ah, that's formal violations. And like, you know, I tried telling her, I was like, man, like I, I was like, it was not a good thing. Like I wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm going to get high. It was like not a happy, you know, it was like having like suicidal thoughts. Like it's not a fun, I'm, I've been doing this for years. Like it's not a fun time when I do it. It's, you know, it's not party time. Uh, you know, and she just uh, kind of viewed it as like complete dishonesty. And uh, I, I, sometimes I think that's a tactic where they just like accuse you of lying over and over. Anyways, uh, you know, she just went hard on me. So she slaps the tether on and then I don't go to jail though. Um, and I think for the next man, I didn't leave the house at all except for like a doctor's appointment for my sublocade, um, for like a month or two. Uh, you know, and it took me like two weeks where it took me about a week to kind of come off everything I did, even though I was only using for a couple of days, I like didn't sleep and just felt horrible uh for like the first week and like tried tossed and turned in bed with like I remember like I was watching Mind Hunter uh the Netflix show and then finally uh I ended up having somebody go to the dispo for me get me some uh THC pens because we are allowed to do that even like in my situation I, I was allowed to uh so then I would just sleep basically all day and I think like three weeks in you know finally I couldn't sleep all day and I literally um, my family hates me. This is when like the hardcore, Ooh, I forgot to mention it. This is when the hardcore, uh, transphobia for my PO and my family kicked in. I think it was like the next day my PO came over and she did this thing where she was, what, she tried to insinuate like, ah, like tying my fuck ups to me dating trans women. Uh, she was, you know, she was just going like, yeah, a, a man cannot become a woman. You are gay. You are gay. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not trying to argue with you. Like that's your, I, I, okay. I get that biology is a thing. I just, you know, you're not the person I'm trying to argue with. Like that's, I, and that's okay that you think that like, that's not, I mean, I wish you didn't, but it's not like a huge deal. Um, and it's like, dude, if I'm, if I was gay, I'd, I'd if I like dudes, I would, you know what I mean? And she's done. What does this have to do with my probation is really the big question, you know? And she tried tying it into like, uh, like two broken people can't fix each other. And I'm like, what the dude I see, I go to the probation office and I see the women that these dudes are dating and don't tell me shit about, them. you know what I mean? Like, don't tell me shit about who I'm dating. It's a fucking joke. Especially like if you, if you would have known her like, you know, career and shit. Um, yeah, but this, it was just blowing my mind. Um, they, and then she almost like offered me an out. She was like, are you secretly gay? And like, all this pressure, that's, that's what's causing you to relapse. And I'm like, wait, so if I like admit that it's like, I have an excuse, <laughs> I don't know, but I didn't, I didn't want to. It was just, uh, man, it, it, it sucks. Um, you know, you can't, everybody tells me like, Oh, you should report her, go to her boss. Like that's, that's a uh, discrimination, man. You don't know what it's like. Like you, until you, until you're the one that's being threatened to be put into a cage, you, you got the easy part done talking about it. Actually doing it is another thing. Uh, yeah, so she really didn't cool off, man. Um, this, and at this point, uh, she only allowed me to apply at McDonald's. 
So I apply online at McDonald's, sit at home for like a week, nothing happens, go in for an interview, talk to him, like another week goes by. And at this point, uh, you know, there's so much time, it's like, fuck it. Um, the, this, this woman I'm talking about helps find me a job for construction flagging. And I apply at that. And in the meantime, McDonald's turns me down. I didn't even know they did that. Um, and I get permission to go interview for the construction flagging job. Keep in mind, I can't leave the house at all. Like anytime I want to leave, I have to contact my PO and they are a nightmare to get a hold of. If they call you, you know, you better answer on the first ring, but they won't answer their phone for shit. Um, so anyways, I, I get the permission to go out there, right? So I, I do that drive, I interview. It seems like I get the job. I have to just come back and like watch some tape or anything. And when I le go to leave the interview, um, the exit to the expressway is on a different road than the one I came on. So like I miss it, I have to turn around, pull up my phone in the GPS for a second, and then I, and then I go back. Um, you know, come back home, and then it was like two days later, uh, this is like right after I had started webcamming, um, and I was making a bunch of money. I just finished a show, literally like naked, like, you know, nasty all over my stomach, and uh, I hear do, 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 and it's like, oh my God, only the police knock like that. So I start going down uh, my stairs, and as I go down my stairs, I see out my window that I, my PO's truck, but it's not parked in the driveway, it's parked in the grass, and I'm like, oh, that's weird. And as I get down, I open the door, and I see why. Like, my, I have a long driveway, and it's filled with law enforcement vehicles, and there's just like 10 cops, like, uh, like six cops and four PO's, and they come in and destroy the house. Um, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but our garage had like a shelving unit and um, countertop that was attached to the wall, big wooden, weighed hundreds of pounds. And it took like four officers. They ripped it off the wall. Like it's gone now. We ended up just getting rid of it. Uh, and that's not the first time they've done damage, man. One time they came, same task force came to the house and there was, we had a car sitting in the driveway that clearly had not been driven for years. You know, when you have a car, you don't drive for years. It's pretty obvious. And they went in and like did like a thousand dollars worth of damage to the upholstery. Uh, and the craziest thing is every time we bring this up to the police, they're like, oh no, that, that wasn't us. That must've been somebody else. Like motherfucker, I live in a town of 7,000 people. Like there's, there's 10 of you. You, you aren't telling me like there's some repeats, you know what I mean? There can only be so many, there's the pool is only so big. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my grandpa comes home during all this and he sees, you know, the damage and he flips out at me cause he thinks I did something to do this. And then they explain to him it's like a random search and that they didn't find anything. And then he, you know, he starts looking around at the damage and all the police. And, you know, we live in a nice house. This is embarrassing. Think of what the neighbors think. And he starts tripping out kind of on the police. And uh, I, they're like, they almost like started positioning themselves to tackle him. And it was like, it was fucked up. Because you have to understand, like, all things aside, uh, you know, my grandpa is a very law abiding guy. Um, he's not a rah, rah, screw the police type. So for him to freak out, like they were like, just blatantly um, in the wrong. So they, they scream in my face. I test clean. They don't find anything. Um, they're screaming in my face and they're accusing me of, remember when I said I missed the exit? They're accusing me of like stopping to meet somebody. And I'm like, why wouldn't I just have them come to my house? Why wouldn't I have them meet me at the job interview? You know what I mean? Why? Make it make sense. And where I tested clean. What is it? You know? And I think that was just kind of an excuse. I think they do this, they, these things like that to kind of like show you who's boss. Like even my grandpa, like we'll show you. Um, yeah. So after that, I, I kind of continued with the webcamming and started getting really successful with it. Um, and then I think I originally first started getting out time just a couple hours and I would go to the gym and I'd already been webcamming for a while at that point. Um, yeah. Now I'm at the point where I can leave from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Um, she just gave me uh, permission. This is the first video I filmed in my own new apartment. Uh, unfortunately, I got resentenced to the freaking drug court program. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take to be in that. Um, I think it's a goddamn joke that they're sending me through it twice. Like, clearly, like, I don't know. I, I, like, just from the point, it seems like it doesn't speak well for their program if they're sending somebody through it twice. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I could make a whole video about, um, you know, so, and I will, I think about the probation system and my beefs with it. But I just want to talk to you about how I got in my current situation. Um, I'm, I'm on my own for the first time. And, uh, 
since I was banned from my main webcamming site, I've been doing OF um, as my primary income, which you can check out on my website. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a lot more YouTube to try to get my name out there. Thank you so much. Please tell me like what else you would like to hear about. I think I was gonna do uh, some, so yeah, my next video I was gonna do is uh, my top three favorite types of gay dudes. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, check out all my stuff. Check out my website. Wink, wink. Uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of good content on there. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the support. I'm sorry it took me like a week. Um, I've, the process of moving has just been a nightmare. So I really want to get something up tonight. Thank you so much.